Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Kevin from Audio Digital back with another video. And I first off just want to give a big shout out and thanks to three people who have signed up for my Patreon. Um, it was a, a big surprise. I, I've had it for a bit and no one had signed up and then three people signed up uh, pretty much within uh, two days of each other. So thanks to George Napier, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, to Steve and to Transom, I hope that's right too. Thank you so much. It really means a lot. Um, it, every little bit is just showing that you support the what I'm doing here, and you appreciate it enough to take the time out and the energy out to, to uh, you know, bless me with that. So um, I really am appreciative. So now let's just get on with this video today. I want to talk about the sampler again and how you can tempo loop clips in the sampler. Um, it's not super obvious how to do it, but once you learn it, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. But first I wanna go over why you'd wanna do that. Because the clip launcher does allow you to loop whatever you want and keep it tempo synced really easily, and that's really the whole point of it. Um, here in Bitwix Studio, we can see I have uh, this clip right here. I can play it and I can change the tempo. and it still goes along really well. And I can play this whole list of clips. No problem, it's, it's really easy. So why would you even need to, to do it in the sampler itself? Um, well, if you're doing um, kind of beat juggling sort of thing, live performance where you're triggering phrases and um, you wanna be able to change the, the relative tempo of those phrases, uh, let's say, especially if you're playing with a, a live band or something and you're bringing in certain samples and phrases, then you really wanna use a sampler for that. You could try um, turning off the quantize for these. So if I turn it off, then I can trigger these like instantly. And that at first blush seems, okay, yeah, I could do that. The problem is, is that there's a little bit of a delay and I don't know if you can see it, but I can definitely feel it. There's a delay there. Um, it doesn't trigger as instantly as the sampler does. So if I'm trying to perform this, it's just not ideal. I really wanna use the, the clip launcher with the clock and um, do everything in that context. Otherwise I should use the drum machine and put samplers in it and then trigger from there. The other thing is that if you're making an instrument and you want to be able to like have, play some chords and have a drum beat go in the background, but with an instrument, you want it to be able to be used in any situation. So if the, the beat that you put with the pads um, can follow tempo, then that's obviously gonna be better. So the third thing that's really good for putting in the sampler is that you can play around with uh, the sample with different pitches, you can use your keyboards to kind of just see what you can do with it and see what you can do with the phrasing of it and, and kind of rearranging it in different ways. And you can do it very quickly with the sampler, whereas you can do a lot of things in, um, in this view, you can chop things up really easily and you can move things around take things in and out. And sometimes that's maybe the best way to play with your sample, but obviously you can't do anything that's polyphonic um, with the clip launcher. So taking like a, you know, like a, a guitar riff and then turning it into a chord, um, stuff like that, that's where you want to use a sampler. And then you want it to be temp tempo synced. So you can use this technique to come up with all kinds of cool ideas. So now that we kind of have an idea of what we're going to be doing with this, let's actually see how it's done. So let's go into a sampler here and I'm going to take this beat, the same beat, and I'm just going to drop it into the sampler and let's play it. So that's as expected. I'm going to turn off the velocity here. So now you can see like if I'm playing this and I turn up and down the tempo, no difference, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't care. It's just an instrument playing basically as far as it knows. So what we wanna do to make it um, sync with tempo is we're gonna use an LFO. So I'm gonna 
use this LFO and I want to make it into a ramp with no curve and make it monopolar. So what I'm basically doing here is turning this LFO into a clock source and it's going to drive the playhead exactly in sync with my music. So I'm going to change this to bar and I think this drum beat is a two bar beat. So I'm going to change this value to two and that's all I need to do with that. So over here, I want to change this to freeze mode and then take the modulator and do that. So now it's going to be scanning across the sample in exact, um, in exact sync with the, the tempo of the song. So now when I change the tempo, it acts like a record player. And that can be really good for a lot of instances, especially if there's not a lot of pitch elements in whatever you're looping. Um, if it's a drum beat, that's going to be really clean and easy and uh, you'll preserve your transients and so forth. But let's say you don't want to, um, you don't want it to change pitch. You just want it to change time. Then we would need to go into textures mode. The thing about textures, especially with drums, is that it mushes up the transients. And the lower I go here, the more it gets kind of sloshy and weird, right? Um, so we can kind of mess with this a bit and try to find the ideal setting. But of course, we don't want to push the tempo too far outside of the intended tempo and for this sample it's 122 beats per minute so we don't want to really push it too hard but it it does work and with a little massaging of the parameters it, it sounds pretty good now it's never going to sound as good as elastic um, algorithms that you can use uh, in the clip launcher um, but let's see what we can do with it real quick and i'm not going to push it this hard let's just go like to 100 and see if we can kind of tighten it up a bit So that's not too bad right there. So the quality we're going to be able to get out of the sampler is going to be similar to what we could get with the old algorithms that used to be in uh, Bitwig for time stretching and so forth because they were all granular based. So if I look at the list that we have here, we have this stretch and this was like the um, original granular base tempo shifts time stretching sort of thing and then you have str uh, stretch hd um so in any case it's 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 usable but yeah it's not elastic but here's another trick if you know what um, tempo you're going to want to do this at like let's say i i really love this sample but i really want to slow it down to 87 or whatever then i can go ahead and make sure this is set to whatever algorithm I want here in this clip, let's use Pro, and then I can just drag and drop it into the sampler. And when I do that, it's going to resample it at that new pitch in, um, and that new tempo. And then I can even turn off uh, repitch, I'm sorry, off textures into repitch, and it's gonna give me a cleaner result. So that way I can kind of use the Z plane stuff in the sampler and have it loop and it'll, it'll lock to tempo and it won't be as um, egregious as, uh, you know, really doing a big shift with granular. So let's talk about changing the phrasing in the sampler. So if we have uh, the sample here and we want to mix it up some and change some of the notes here, we can go in and Probably the easiest thing to do is to split it up into pieces on onset. And then uh, let's say we want to change the pitch of this guy. We go into pitch mode and just find the pitch we want and listen to that. So that's pretty painless and easy to do, and it sounds great because, again, we're using the elastic uh, stuff there. But let's um, see what we can do in the sampler with such a thing as this to change the phrasing. So if we go into the sampler and we start playing with this, 
We can, of course, change the pitch if I turn on pitch tracking. But I think this might be a bug. Um, I can't get the LFO to reset along with the sampler. And now I have the sampler in mono mode here and I have it on never retrigger. So if I hit another key, it shouldn't, it shouldn't reset the uh, LFO until I play a total new phrase. And <clears throat> the envelopes behave the way you would want to see that envelope isn't changing, but this LFO will reset every time. So I can't really go through the this thing using this technique and change pitch as I go. Um, but you can do it in the grid. So let's load this up in the grid. And here we have the same thing. I'm using an LFO within the grid to drive the playback head. And these LFO do do um, the expected um, behavior. So I'm in mono mode here. And you can see I can just play this in and change it in real time. So you can hear that the, the granular synthesis makes it sound a bit gross. And we can we can kind of massage that a bit. Usually like if you're going up in pitch, a lot of times it sounds better if we use um, um, a shorter grain value. If we, if we use a big one, it can get a little weird there. So, um, what we can do is put in a key tracker so that we can decrease the grain size or uh, yeah, decrease the grain size as we go up in pitch. Um, and so this will, will help things somewhat. Uh, so around middle C, if I'm going up, we can just tune this until it sounds decent to us. I think that's about as good as it'll get. <laughs> so yeah, you can just play around until you get the, the phrase you want. So in any case, um, even if you don't like the results you get by using that technique, you can at least kind of know what kind of phrasing you want and then go back into here and, and do the corresponding notes you want in the, uh, the uh, clip editor here and change the pitches like you want. But um, usually you can get a decent enough result that it, it can kind of work if you massage it enough. Um, so that's phrasing and that is a real help, but, uh, what maybe is even cooler is that we can use the power of polyphony and come up with whole new kind of ideas of what we can do with a sample. Uh, here I have a sample of a flute. It's not even really a full phrase, um, but we can load in the sampler. I already have it loaded here and we have it, uh, tempo sync. So. And we can play it polyphonically. And so that adds a whole new dimension that you can kind of make up new ideas and do all kinds of things with samples. And another thing we can do with the phrasing is this is a little short. It doesn't feel like a full phrase. So I already set up this four stage so that it'll play through the sample once and then play back through the beginning again and then start over and loop that. So if I take um, this here and put it into here, then we have a new phrase. And that sounds a little bit better, so. Now I can program some notes and make something like this.
So you can easily get like just a really simple clip and kind of make something entirely new with it. And that is possible to do with the clips, but you'd have to do multiple clips and change the pitch. But if you really want to be able to just sit down and play uh, different chords and different variations, it's much easier to use the sampler. And it's going to make s much more sense if you're tempo synced. So that's really the magic of using this uh, tempo sync technique. Um, there's even more obviously that you can do with it but i think hopefully this gives you an idea when you understand that you can use the freeze mode in combination with the lfo to do the sort of thing then you can just take it from there and come up with all kinds of amazing ideas so anyway i hope this has been helpful to you let me know if you have any questions um thanks again for watching my videos and for all of your your comments and, and support and hey have a wonderful day bye